Welcome back to our lecture series in rate processes. So today we will take up uh, this uh, topic uh, on um, kinetics of some specific reactions and under the heading, under this heading we will talk about enzyme inhibition. Uh, till now we have talked about uh, reaction rates, rate laws, effect of temperature on reaction rate, then complex reactions. We also have talked about <coughs> theories of uh, reaction rate, then we talked about kinetics of some specific reactions and under this heading we will uh, deal with uh, this enzyme inhibition. We already have talked about uh, enzyme kinetics that is the bio uh, catalysis where enzyme is the bio catalyst. Okay. Like uh, chemical reactions, normal chemical reactions in biochemical system. Uh, these enzymes are uh, acting as catalyst. So, uh, under this uh, heading enzyme inhibition, we will uh, talk about what is meant by enzyme in inhibition and various uh, aspects of this. Okay. Now, before uh, going into the details of it, uh, let us uh, have some uh, recapitulation. Now, we, we have dealt with this uh, Michaelis maintain kinetics where uh, we talked about uh, this uh, Km that is Michaelis constant. Now, uh, if this Michaelis maintain equation is, is written you know in this form that is your in this form means uh, 1 by V is equal to Km by V max into 1 by S where S is substrate concentration plus 1 by V max. So, this is M, this is X and this is C. Okay, and this is y. Now, k m is a constant. So, uh, this is called uh, the Michaelis constant. Now, small k m means tight binding that is binding interaction is tighter. So, like uh, suppose you have got this is your enzyme and say this is your substrate. So, they are bound tight together. Okay? So, it is difficult to separate them out maybe. Okay? So, when uh, Km is small, then this is more, this interaction is more, that is binding is tighter and high Km means weak binding. Okay? So, when Km that is Michaelis constant is high, then, then binding interaction is uh, weak. Now, this is uh, useful, I mean uh, this Km is very useful, you know, uh, to compare uh, you know uh, these various uh, reactants and uh, they are they are you know how how efficient you know some enzyme is with respect to some reactant or with respect to you know a different reactant now so for for example if we think of uh, this hexokinase this enzyme now when the substrate is d fructose it is 1.5 millimolar km is 1.5 millimolar whereas for d glucose it is 0.15 millimolar. So, the value of this, I mean this for D glucose is K value of K m for D glucose is uh, less. That means, you know here it is tight binding. Okay? It is also useful to compare K m for a common substrate used by several enzymes like hexokinase and glucokinase. For hexokinase D glucose case, it is 0.15 millimolar, whereas for uh, glucokinase D glucose it is 20 millimolar. Okay, so value this value is higher. Okay, compared to this value. Okay, so we can we can uh, compare, you know, uh, compare whether the binding is uh, stronger or the binding is weaker. Now enzyme inhibition. Now, enzyme inhibitors are important for a variety of reasons. Now, it can be used to get information about the shape of the enzyme active site. You know, you have got, suppose you have got an enzyme like this, it is basically a protein and say this is your active site. Okay? So, this active site, in this active site, suppose your, uh, your reactant fits and then chemical reaction takes place and after that your product is formed plus your enzyme is retained back 
Okay. So, uh, you know inhibitors are used you know to find information about the shape of the enzyme active site say this site may be and the residues in the active site. So, there are residues in these active sites. So, maybe in this region in this in this region this is the active site. So, residues are there. So, which residues are there and which residues are important compared to the other that we can that we can get information about. Uh, then, then it can be used to get information about the mechanism. Okay. So, to get the information of the mechanism or how this reaction is taking place. So, mechanistic part is also you know we can we can find out the information of that. It can be used to get information about the regulation or control of metabolic pathways. So, using in, in using various inhibitors we can find out these things and also for drug design these studies are very important that is enzyme inhibition studies are very important. Next types of uh, inhibition one is called you know you know when, when it is the question of inhibition that means we need an inhibitor. Okay. So, reversible inhibitor is basically a substance that binds to an enzyme to inhibit the reaction but can be released in a reversible fashion. So, usually involves formation of non-covalent bonds maybe some van der Waals interaction, maybe hydrophobic interaction or maybe some electrostatic interaction. So, these are the three non-covalent mode modes of interaction by which uh, this inhibitor can bind with, uh, with the enzyme. Next is irreversible inhibitor. What is an irreversible inhibitor? It is a substance that causes inhibition that cannot be reversed. So, it is a it is a reversible formation of bond that is usually it involves the formation or breaking of covalent bonds. Okay? That is breaking of covalent bonds may be within enzyme or may be formation of new bonds. That is a it is basically a chemical transformation of your enzyme. So, therefore, if the enzyme loses its activity and in a it is an in a, I mean irreversible fashion. Okay. But for reversible case since the binding is not a covalent interaction I mean bond is not a covalent bond. So, maybe maybe it can be reversed back. Okay. So, because uh, because like uh, hydrophobic hydrogen bonding may be electrostatic or van der Waals interaction these are the modes of interaction for reversible inhibition. Okay. Now, so when you talk about irreversible or reversible uh, you know inhibition you know there are, there are other things that we should uh, take into account. One is you know there are there are three types of broad classification with respect to inhibition. One is competitive inhibition, next is mixed or non competitive inhibition third is uncompetitive inhibition. Okay. So, competitive inhibition mixed or non-competitive inhibition and the third one is uncompetitive. So, competitive, non-competitive, uncompetitive. Okay. So, these are the three types of uh, you know inhibitors. Okay. So, maybe you can you can call like competitive inhibitor, maybe in another case you can call non competitive inhibitor or maybe uncompetitive inhibitor so let us uh, look into the the chemical scheme for enzyme inhibition see uh, in this particular state uh, uh, scheme enzyme plus substrate producing enzyme substrate complex then it produces the outcome outcome that is your product with a say uh, a rate constant of k b this is associ i mean k is the forward uh, rate constant for e s formation and this is the backward rate constant i mean the dissociation of e s complex the moment you add some inhibitor what is going to happen 
that may be this inhibitor directly binds to the enzyme okay producing enzyme inhibitor complex like this okay ei giving rise to e plus i and back to ei so this is one one reaction so this is ki okay and this is for your i mean inhibitor dissociation process okay or maybe or, or, or maybe the reverse process is enzyme inhibitor complex formation and the forward process is enzyme inhibitor you know dissociation okay you can think in in other way also i mean you can write this reaction in a in a reverse fashion another situation is enzyme substrate then it binds to inhibitor producing enzyme substrate inhibitor then it it gives you you know re, in a reversible fashion enzyme substrate plus inhibitor so the corresponding uh, equilibrium constant can be written as this okay we are defining one quantity alpha which is 1 plus i by ki or alpha prime is 1 plus i by ki primed okay and in this case v can be written you know in this fashion and if we plot plot in this way 1 by v versus 1 by s then we see that there are three situations okay when alpha is greater than 1 and alpha prime is equal to 1 okay For this one you are, we are getting alpha is equal to alpha prime is equal to 1 this is another situation the second situation is alpha is equal to 1 alpha prime is greater than 1 i mean this this the second means this one in in second i know for the curve b and uh, here you see that alpha is equal to alpha prime is equal to 1 so this may be another situation third situation is that like this and you see that difference is that you see that uh, for this one the intercept same for both curves we see that these two intercepts are different and also it is cutting the one by by s axis at different points here also they are cutting at different points here we see that these intercepts are different but they are cutting at the same one by s axis so how this is coming we will be discussing uh, later on so these three situations may be may be may be may be considered okay irreversible inhibition the inhibitor binds with the essential part of the enzyme active center by covalent bond resulting in loss of activity for example so this schematically written in this way that say this is one uh, reactant this is your enzyme e so it is producing something like this and hx something else also another another you know resulting substance is produced but you see that this this is a covalent bond formation so that means enzyme activity since this is a permanent bond formation so enzyme is no longer enzyme is no longer free okay enzyme is no longer free to react with another substrate so the reaction after after this reaction happens no further reaction is taking place okay so that means the enzyme loses its, its activity so this is called a uh, irreversible inhibition it is not a, not in a reversible fashion so backward reaction is impossible or even if it happens it happens to an infinitesimally small extent so that that is practically not uh, you know of any significance okay so this is basically a schematic uh, representation of uh, irreversible inhibition okay now inhibition pattern an inhibitor may bind at the same site as substrates okay that means suppose you have got this enzyme say so this is your 
your substrate and say this is another similar looking inhibitor okay they have got resemblance in their structure so maybe what is happening that it will come over here that is it will compete with this so this one also this one these two are having the probability of binding to this or occupying this this space okay so so they are structurally similar so they are having structural resemblance and as a result of which they will bind to the same active site okay next situation is an inhibitor may bind at a different site and thereby altering the catalytic activity although substrate binding remains identical so suppose your enzyme is this and your inhibitor binds at some other place okay in such a way that suppose here it binds your inhibitor and it modifies your active site or active site activity okay in an indirect fashion so that the reaction gets slowed down okay although apparently these particular site that is active site is not disturbed but because of this binding some internal structural change may happen as a result of which this enzyme activity may get reduced okay the third, third situation is that many inhibitors may do both of this that at the same time it may bind here also bind at a different place so they are doing in a in a, in a in a parallel fashion maybe as i told you that uh, the type of inhibitors i mean inhibition is competitive non competitive or mixed and the third one is uncompetitive okay so competitive inhibitor it competes with the substrate okay suppose uh, uh, suppose you have got uh, similar kind of you know substrate and inhibitor then what is happening that enzyme does not know which one which one whether this one is, is is its right substrate or this one is its right substrate but to us this s is our right substrate so what is happening that it becomes difficult since they are having structural resemblance it is difficult for the enzyme to discriminate between these two and as a result of which it is said that these two compete for the for the same active site okay malonate is a competitive inhibitor of succinate for succinate dehydrogenase like the scheme uh, uh, shown over here okay although you know succinate for succinate after adding sub succinate or in presence of succinate dehydrogenase it uh, produces fumarate but here no reaction occurs but they are having some structural resemblance because it is a you know diacid this is also diacid although it is only one ch2 spacer there are two ch2 spacers okay so for the formation of a double bond you need another c since it is not available over here so no reaction occurs but although they are having structural resemblance so they are competing each uh, i mean competing for the same enzyme that is succinate dehydrogenase okay next competitive inhibition the scheme is uh, like the classical scheme there is the, this is a normal scheme enzyme substrate enzyme substrate complex then enzyme back then product okay now since the inhibitor is present there along with your substrate what is happening now this inhibitor again binds with your enzyme so what will happen with with a with a binding constant ki okay producing ei so a competitive inhibitor lowers the amount of unbound enzyme available to substrate binding 
and as a result of which k m per substrate increases. Okay? k m per substrate increases means your in, you know binding is less as I told at the very beginning. Okay? Now, what will happen? The other situation is that if you add your substrate to a huge extent, huge extent means that the substrate concentration is very high, then what will happen? That concentration, if, you, if we take the concentration ratio of substrate to inhibitor, then the ratio for substrate to you know sub, sub, substrate is more, I mean more amount of substrate is, is there. Okay. So, what is happening that uh, may be almost all the enzyme molecules are you know are surrounded by many substrate molecules compared to I inhibitor. So, what is happening? So, probability of binding of the substrate molecule increases since you increase the concentration of your substrate. Okay. So, that this path is you know more accessible than this path. So, this is happening parallelly, but since the concentration of your substrate is very high is very high therefore, this is the major channel. So, competitive inhibition can be can be minimized with high substrate concentration. It cannot be eliminated, but it can be minimized that is the effect can be minimized with high substrate concentra concentration. Okay. So, what is happening for your competitive inhibition? A competitive inhibitor lowers the amount of unbound enzyme available to substrate binding and thereby K m for substrate increases. And if we increase the concentration of your substrate, then competitive inhibition remains but the effect is minimized. The effect is minimized because more of substrates are there. So, probability that the substrate will bind to enzyme is more as a result of which your normal reaction path is more uh, promoted compared to this inhibition path. Okay. Next. So, uh, the corresponding uh, plot 1 by V versus 1 by S, you see that this is for your no inhibitor present, no inhibitor present and this is for your competitive inhibitor present. Okay. Let us go back to the earlier slide, okay. this one, you see, uh, here you see that this is 1 by V axis intercept for both red and blue curve same, but corresponding uh, you know meeting point at on, on this 1 by S axis you see the intercept on X axis it is 1 by K m okay, minus 1 by K m. You see this is nearer to this point and this is farther. Okay. So, an intercept is 1 by V max. So, maximal velocity remains same okay. and the slope you see K m by V max. So, V max 1 by V max same for both. So, K m is different. Okay. So, Michael is constant is different. Okay. So, for your competitive inhibition, if it is a case of competitive inhibition, you will be getting a curve, I mean a plot like this in absence of inhibitor and in presence of an inhibitor. Okay. So, this type of uh, plot you may expect for a competitive inhibition. As I told you uh, in the in the uh, here also, you see. So, this is a case of this is a case of competitive inhibition. So, three possibilities are there. Okay. So, first possibility we are just uh, we have just explored. Okay. So, pictorially competitive inhibition for a unimolecular unimolecular reaction enzyme substrate 
enzyme substrate complex then product okay then product will be released and enzyme will be freed to come back to here and do the do the do this in a cyclic fashion okay so uh, in presence of a competitive inhibit inhibitor what is happening that your enzyme is here they look very similar you see this part and this part they look very similar although this side is different it is pictorially you know demonstrated in this so you see that this one is having the option to bind here um, you know take this uh, place or maybe this one can attach over here okay so what is happening that if it attaches then substrate cannot access this this pocket for the reaction to take place so basically enzyme competitive inhibitor complex so now what what you can do is you can increase the concentration of this substrate so probability wise if it is very high then competitive inhibitor cannot compete concentration wise and as a result of which more of substrate will bind to enzyme to give give rise to product so that thereby you can minimize so it is a unimolecular case that one pocket one substance now if it is a case of two pocket and two substance then you see this is your substrate and this is another substrate okay so you see that uh, substrate one substrate two it is producing enzyme substrate complex then giving rise to products now if you have if you have your uh, your competitive inhibitor over here so which will compete with this s then in place of s this competitive inhibitor will take this this place so that uh, to have this further reaction you know since inhibitor is here so further reaction basically cannot take place okay so this these are basically pictorial representation so the pictorial representation of uh, the enzyme pocket okay next is uncompetitive inhibition okay what is that uncompetitive inhibition that uh, your uncompetitive inhibitor binds to the enzyme substrate complex okay it it does not bind to your uh, enzyme okay so what happens is that once enzyme substrate complex is formed then this has got two options either it will go it, it, it will go this way to produce your product or it will move this way to give rise to enzyme inhibitor substrate complex or um, sometimes it is called as ESI or EIS uh, okay so what happens the decrease in Vmax and Km okay now you see if you increase the substrate concentration suppose there was 1 s initially now increase it to 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 so what will happen that if you increase this substrate concentration more of E s will be formed and the more this is formed this that is enzyme substrate complex is formed it has got more option to uh, more option to move to this pathway so that means you I mean, you cannot minimize this step because in no way you can you can stop this process because this process is very much dependent on the availability of es okay so therefore this the effect of this uncompetitive inhibition cannot be cannot be minimized cannot be minimized with cannot be minimized with high substrate concentration okay so if you go back to competitive inhibition you see that here the inhibitor binds directly with enzyme directly with enzyme but in case of uncompetitive it does in a different fashion that it binds with enzyme substrate okay to produce enzyme substrate inhibitor a different complex and once it is formed it cannot give rise to this this one that is your product 
okay? and there is a change in V max as well as K m. Okay? So, uncompetitive inhibition you see substrate, this is another substrate, this is the you know third substrate. So, what is happening? These three are you know binding with the enzyme to produce to give rise to product P, this is a product then P2 and and also something over here. So, in presence of uh, uncompetitive inhibitor, so your substrate binds okay, giving rise to enzyme substrate and then un uncompetitive inhibitor binds over here. Once it binds, then this S2 cannot access this site. So, reaction stops over here. Okay. You see that this uncompetitive inhibitor, inhibitor binds with enzyme substrate complex, not with the free enzyme. Okay. Its action is important when substrate is bound, already bound with the enzyme. With the enzyme. Okay. So, when substrate is not present, its action is you know, it is not desirable, you cannot, cannot see its action. But the moment substrate is present, it binds, it stops the enzyme activity. Okay. It stops the enzyme activity. Okay. Mm. This is uncompetitive, you see for uncompetitive this inhibitor increases okay, and the corresponding plots you see that this uh, these numbers, this, this intercept on y axis it is you know changing okay. and also this intercept is changing. Okay. So, both V and also V max and also Michael is constant, these are changing for an uncompetitive situation. Okay. So, for your competitive you see it is one point on your y axis and two different points on your x axis, you see here three different points on y three different points on x axis of course, in negative fashion. So, this is uncompetitive situation. Okay. Next, mixed or non competitive inhibition. Now, the situation is the inhibitor may bind to both free enzyme as also the enzyme substrate complex. The affinity of the inhibitor to the two complexes could be different. Okay. If binding of inhibitor results in a change of affinity for the substrate, K m will be changed and as a result uh, you know and the, the, the name is uh, mixed inhibition. Okay. If K m is changed, but if only V max is affected then it is called non competitive inhibition. Okay, so, two situations mixed inhibition K m will be changed, non competitive inhibition V max will be affected. The scheme is kinetic scheme is this enzyme substrate producing enzyme substrate complex giving rise to your enzyme back and product. Now, this enzyme can bind to both I mean this E s as also E with K i for E and K i primed for E s. So, giving rise to E i for here and enzyme inhibitor substrate complex for here. Okay. But remember for your uncompetitive the situation is like E i s. So, only the enzyme binds over here with enzyme substrate, but not with your enzyme, but here non-competitive or mixed fashion you see that enzyme binds with E s and I mean your inhibitor binds with E s and E with different you know rate constant I mean equilibrium constants E i s and E i. Okay. So, if K m is changed it is called mixed, if 
only Vmax is affected, it is called non-competitive inhibitor. Okay. You see mixed inhibition substrate okay, enzyme, this is another substrate. Okay. So, it is basically a bimolecular scheme. Okay. So, substrate binds with enzyme producing enzyme substrate, another S2 also binds over here giving rise to your product. Okay. You see this is a case of mixed inhibition, I mean non-competitive or mixed inhibition. You see <coughs> non-competitive inhibitor substrate, substrate 2. First substrate binds, then in presence of non-competitive inhibitor this is produced or in an another situation your enzyme first non-competitive inhibitor binds, then in presence of your substrate it gives rise to this. Okay. So, basically this enzyme free enzyme and enzyme substrate inhibitor they are in equilibrium via these two may be intermediates. So, these four are in equilibrium. Okay. So, that is why basically you can you can put uh, you know basically enzyme inhibitor then enzyme in the inhibitor substrate just put one substrate over here. So, that these four are in equilibrium. Okay. And only enzyme substrate channel can gives, give rise to this enzyme plus product. So, probability wise enzyme sub free enzyme substrate is reduced and reaction rate is lowered. Okay. So, it is called the mixed inhibition. Okay. So, uh, so, this is the scheme enzyme substrate, enzyme substrate then giving rise to I mean enzyme plus substrate giving rise to enzyme substrate then product plus enzyme. In presence of inhibitor what is happening? Enzyme inhibitor substrate <coughs> then this is in equilibrium with enzyme inhibitor then enzyme inhibitor is equilibrium with this one. So, this is the this is the, this is the equilibrium scheme you see as I have shown over here, <coughs> this is the equilibrium, they are these four species are in equilibrium. Now, what is happening that if you put, so you see here there is one channel through which you can get your product. Okay. So, if you increase your substrate concentration to a huge value, huge number, then what is happening? that possibility of this step I mean this channel is a little increased although these steps are there. So, you can partially overcome the effect of this inhibition mixed inhibition by increasing your substrate concentration. So, what is happening as a result of which what is happening you see that Vmax is decreased and K m may get increased or may get decreased. Okay, you see these are three situations you see this is increased inhibitor is increased you see and this cutting point is here in between not on your y axis. So, three distinct situations are there this is your mixed or you know non-competitive come back to earlier slide okay. that uh, this is one case, this is the third case, this is the second case uncompetitive this is the non-competitive or mixed inhibition. Okay. So, for your mixed inhibition like your competitive inhibition is a kind of competitive kind of, but not exactly competitive, it is a all the, it is a non competitive, but it has resemblance to your to, to competitive that you can partially overcome. Although competitive inhibition can be uh, greatly overcome, 
with high substrate concentration here also you can you can cannot fully overcome but you can partly overcome with high substrate concentration so this is a typical plot for your mixed inhibition okay so general uh, non competitive inhibition you see no inhibitor present this one non competitive inhibitor you see it is here okay km is remaining same okay km is remaining same so km is uh, remaining same means you see this is a non competitive inhibition if km is affected it is called mixed inhibition okay you see here km is affected km is affected okay so here km is not affected so it is called your non competitive inhibition okay so if this cutting point is somewhere over here then km will be affected but if if this cutting point is here then you know km is not affected you see only vmax is affected you see one by vmax over here the, there is another one i mean this is a different one by vmax so vmax is affected so that's why it is a non competitive inhibitor okay again go back to competitive inhibition you see the typical plot for competitive inhibition okay this one you see uh, km is changing but vmax is remaining same okay and uh, non competitive km is fixed vmax is changed okay and this is because your scheme has changed okay scheme means the reaction scheme has changed and as a result of which your you know um, the plot is different okay so let us go back to this slide this is your non competitive inhibition this is your competitive inhibition this is uncompetitive inhibition okay so thus we, we can we, we can explain these three you know curves arising out of uh, you know you know using using enzyme kinetics when when you talk about enzyme inhibitors and three types of three broad classifications are there competitive uncompetitive and non competitive that is competitive uncompetitive and non competitive okay so for your competitive inhibition vmax is not changed only km as i told you km is you know km is increased and km is increased means your you know binding is less binding affinity is less less as a result of the presence of your inhibitor okay for your uncompetitive it's a different situation that you get two parallel plots as if these two are you know occurring in an unconnected fashion and the third one is has got connection over here you see that km is not changed but vmax okay vmax is changing okay so so now why have we uh, have we learned this uh, enzyme inhibitors what is the necessity of uh, exploring this one now many drugs are enzyme inhibitors okay enzyme inhibitors means uh, sometime you need to inhibit the action of some of the enzymes within our body for some you know for some reason or in some cases suppose in presence of some inhibitor some physiological you know process are impaired okay so in that case you need to remove your inhibitor now many drugs are enzyme inhibitors so their discovery and improvement 
is an active area of research in biochemistry and also in pharmacology. A medicinal enzyme inhibitor is often judged by its specificity and its potency. Okay? Now, uh, by its uh, specificity and potency means, uh, specificity means how specific its action is. And a high specificity and potency ensure that a drug will have few side effects and thus it will have low toxicity. Toxicity means side effects. Suppose we are putting a drug, we are giving a drug which has got side effects means it is parallelly affecting other uh, biochemical channels. Okay. It is affecting our, our uh, interest, I mean uh, our, our uh, I mean the channel which we are interested in along with other channels which, which is not desirable. Okay. So, we need to you know we need to minimize the side effect and we need to minimize the toxicity. Okay. So, that is why high specificity and uh, potency is very important. Okay. Now, enzyme inhibitors also occur naturally and are involved in regulation of metabolism and natural enzyme inhibitors can also be poisons okay, and are used as used to defend uh, predators or, uh, or as ways of killing prey. Okay. So, therefore, natural enzymes are also you know very important and uh, this natural enzyme inhibitors are also very important. Okay. So, uh, summing up what we have learned, let us again come back from uh, come back to our starting point that uh, we started with with this uh, Michaelis maintain kinetics. We talked about the significance of KM all, uh, all, already, already we have a discussion in, in, a, in an earlier class about this uh, Michaelis maintain kinetics. Now, the significance of smallness or largeness of KM is discussed <coughs> with the help of you know line weaver bark plot we try to explain various types of uh, you know inhibition uh, effects. Now, you know enzyme inhibitors they are uh, why we, why they are important because uh, uh, which in, uh, you know informations are necessary. I mean uh, that I mean uh, basically you want to uh, get information about the res I mean uh, active sites and also the residues that are important in the active sites. We want to get information or we want to get uh, idea about the mechanism that is why studies on, on inhibition is very important. Okay. Uh, how meta metabolic pathways can be affected? Okay. with the help of uh, inhibitors we can study that and also most importantly drug design okay. because certain drugs are enzyme inhibitors. That means, uh, if we put that drug or we, if we administer that, that drug then it will bind to the active site of the enzyme or it will, it will uh, tend to change you know the the local uh, site of your active region of the enzyme by some secondary effect maybe it is binding to a distance point from the active site and it changes uh, the activity so the study of this enzyme inhibition is very important types of uh, inhibition whether it is reversible or irreversible we talked about it reversible inhibition means it is a non covalent bond formation and irreversible inhibition means it is basically a, a formation of a coval uh, formation of covalent bonds or rearrangement of a number of covalent bonds within the enzyme or maybe 
uh, in the enzyme substrate or enzyme inhibitor uh, complex. Now, uh, now uh, competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition and uncompetitive inhibition we have talked about. Then the basic kinetic scheme we have given and three dif different uh, situations can be can be obtained out of it. One is for competitive, another is for uncompetitive and third one is for non-competitive inhibition. We have given the idea of irreversible inhibition that is irreversible, irreversibly this enzyme is transformed to something else. Now different inhibition patterns we, we talked about, uh, we talked about your uh, in details taking each situations like for your competitive inhibition how uh, it is operative, how this can be minimized and the line weaver bark plot for your competitive inhibition and its characteristics. Then with the help of pictorial diagram we try to explain the competitive inhibition, then we uh, went to competitive I mean uncompetitive inhibition and the corresponding diagram line weaver bark plot. Then we came to non-competitive inhibition and uh, with the help of this diagram we try to explain the corresponding line weaver bark plot. It is the non-competitive case how does it look whether uh, we are, I mean, uh, whether we are getting a different KM or not. So, it, it looks like that we are getting same KM but different Vmax for your non-competitive case although for mixed case it is different you see here this different KM and different Vmax. And the importance of enzyme inhibitors, we try to give you some idea why we need to study. Okay? And actually this inhibitor studies are very important for rational drug design. So, this is very important, uh, means who, uh, this is very important means the study of enzyme inhibitors is uh, very important. So, with this uh, words we uh, would like to uh, I would like to conclude this session. So, in the next session uh, we will uh, talk about this uh, kinetics uh, of uh, autocatalytic reaction and uh, oscillatory reactions. So, till then uh, goodbye.